So I've been asked to design a audio mixer for installation in a venue. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you guys the design process. What you can see on this page is step one in any design, which is to write out a specification and propose a block diagram for how to structure the system. Now, in this case, we are producing a simple wall-mounted mixer for controlling a venue sound system. So it's got to have a microphone input to allow a speaker to stand up and speak and use a microphone and be amplified in the venue. It needs an auxiliary input for music or a laptop or the output from whatever device is being used to give the presentation. And it also needs a pair of XLR inputs that bypass the entire mixer and connect straight to the amplifiers to allow a mixing console to be used to do live music in the venue as well. So we started with our specifications. Up here we have our inputs. So stereo, aux in, that will be on a pair of RCAs, uh, phono connectors. A mono microphone input, that will be balanced and it will be on an XLR. And I'm not planning to, use, to provide phantom power. I'm just going to limit this to using dynamic microphones. And then the stereo bypass input, which is also going to, it will be a balanced XLR input. And that will connect straight to the speaker, so there'll be no gain trim, there'll be no unbalancing or, or amplification of that signal. It'll literally go through a switch to the speakers. So let's go through these um, in a bit more detail. So the auxiliary input will be RCA connectors, as I've said, which means it's a single-ended, unbalanced signal. It'll be nominally line level, although since it will be coming from a phone, the signal level will need to be adjustable because every phone has a different output voltage. So the gain on the trimmer for that will be also the independent volume control for that. So it needs to go down to nothing to, to infinite attenuation and actually cut the signal off and then up to about plus 20 dB of gain to account for weak signal sources. And that'll be on a potentiometer on the front panel. And there'll be a dial that you turn to adjust the, the relative level of the aux input. Next we have a microphone input, XLR connector, balanced as I said. It's going to have a 2K2 input impedance, I'll get into input impedance in a bit more detail later on, but that will allow it to have a nice low noise connection to a 600 ohm output uh, microphone. 2 hertz to 20 kilohertz bandwidth, pretty standard. Uh, 2 hertz means that the combination of any other high pass filters in the system mean that it won't start to encroach on that 20 hertz bandwidth. I just want to make sure that my circuit, A, doesn't respond to DC, because that could cause problems. And but So it definitely needs to have an AC coupling in there somewhere, and I've chosen 2 hertz so that I'm definitely not the part of the system that limits the lower end bandwidth. Uh, gain range 0 dB to 60, so this one doesn't need to go all the way down to, to nothing, but it will go up to plus 60. That's going to be a trim on this one. The uh, that will literally just be to sort of get the level correct. So what we'll also have on that one is a is an indicator LED that indicates if the circuit clips. <clears throat> I'll get into that in more detail. So the the use case will be you turn that one up until it's just starting to clip, and then turn it down a bit, and then use the master volume for the uh, for the overall mic level. And then again, this will be on a potentiometer on the front panel. The bypass input, pair of XLRs, direct connector output, so there'll be as little circuitry as possible in that signal chain. Now the outputs will be a slight subtlety to this. There's actually going to be three outputs. The room is going to be re is going to have three loudspeakers, one in, in three corners, that will allow the room to be adjusted. So essentially what you'll have is a square room like this, with a loudspeaker here, a loudspeaker here, and a loudspeaker here. And the stage can be there, or it can be there. The room's reconfigurable. So when the stage is here, this is left and this is right. When the stage is here, this is left and this is right. So there needs to be three outputs with a selector to allow the room orientation to be adjusted. And there needs to be an overall master volume control that goes from infinite attenuation to, again, plus 20 dB. We might make that plus 10, in fact, because plus 20 dB for an output gain is far too much. Really, it should never go above zero, but we'll get into that in a bit more detail. 
in a minute. Now, the next feature we want to add is a room EQ. So I want this to have a 10 band graphic equalizer built in that will be uh, a set once and forget type of deal. So that will allow the room to be compensated when the system's installed and then never touched again. So those will be done using trimmer pots that are mounted straight on the PCB that are set once. Each band needs plus minus 20 dB of gain. And ideally I want to have the whole thing stereo so there's just 10 potentiometers that control both channels. So that will either be using dual gang potentiometers or I might be able to do something clever and have a control voltage setting the uh, the gain of each band and then we can just have a single pot. Uh, finally there's the power supply. I want this thing to run off a single 12 volt power supply so the input to the whole system will need to be just a single 12 volt DC. However <clears throat> because we're using all zero centered balanced signals I actually want to keep the circuitry simple I want to use uh, plus minus 15 volt supplies internally for the op amps gives me lots of headroom, <clears throat> 30 volts of voltage swing for the actual signal, well less a bit to let the op-amp stay away from the rails, and it means that I can DC couple most of the stages of my amplifier and just have the high pass filter at the input, which again keeps the circuitry nice and simple, keeps the noise down. So we're going to design quite a clever power supply that's going to take the 12 volts and boost it up to plus 18 and incidentally use a, a piggybacker charge pump off the switching node in the power supply to get the minus 18, and then run that through a pair of linear regulators to drop that down to plus minus 15 volts, which is then will filter out the switching noise. And we'll probably put a LC filter circuit on the output as well to make sure that we get rid of any switching noise that makes it through that linear regulator and get a nice low noise power supply. So what I'm going to do is break this down into steps and I'm going to make a video, a separate video for each design step of the process along the way of designing this thing and you guys can follow along. <laughs> 